In this video, we are going to walk through how to geotag your photographs with a Nikon DSLR with no GPS. Hey, this is Scott Widenkiff with a storyteller with a camera talking about all the things photographers like you and I are thinking about. If you have been following my videos for the past few years, then you know that I've talked a lot about geotagging photos. I'm a big fan of geotagging photos. And I have recently acquired the Nikon D850. Now I have a GPS module that will work with the body. And one of my complaints with the Nikon bodies is they don't really incorporate GPS built in like a lot of the new Canons do. But it's okay because they actually created a very easy way to geotag photos with minimal battery drain. The Nikon D850 has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built into the body. Now, I have the camera right here on a tripod, and you're about to see, I'll just do a remote capture right now, so you can see I'm using SnapRidge on my phone. I'll turn this sideways so that it's actually wider, takes up the full screen. And and I, so I'm re basically, I'm just capturing using my phone. I am capturing the, 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 the camera um, being able to, to literally just completely just take a picture just like this. And right now I've, it's out of focus. Of course, I'd have to refocus and, uh, turn off manual fo uh, autofocus on the, on the camera and whatnot. But, um, I can completely change settings. I can do everything I need to. I can, you know, take it off of, of, off of aperture priority if I want to and, and all that kind of stuff. The cool part about SnapRidge, besides from the fact that I can actually control the camera completely and, and change focus too. I can completely do so much. The beautiful thing about SnapRidge is that I can, from the Bluetooth, not even the Wi-Fi aspect, not even from the remote capture, they see the remote photography spot on the bottom of the app, is actually, if you go to the menu and you go to app options, you can see that you can actually adjust the location data accuracy. And what that will do is actually allow you to geotag your photos just from the app. So the app is gonna, it's gonna be on your phone. It's gonna be on an Android or an iPhone. And you're going to be able to auto link. Um, you can see if I go to the auto link options, like it'll automatically link whenever I have the app open and the camera's on, it'll automatically connect the two together. And I would, it also auto download any JPEG photos automatically. And if you want, you can actually have it go up to the Nikon cloud which, you know, it's nothing professional to, for storage. It's really just, you know, a fun way to share your photos. But you can also sync your camera clock, which I think is very important. And you can also sync your location data. And of course, like as I just showed you, you can also adjust the accuracy. There's also a power saver mode, which says to save power, the device must, uh, device will suspend linking links running in the background if it is out of range of the camera or con camera controls remain unused for a set period of time. So basically, um, if you are using SnapRidge and you walk away from your camera, it will disable. Or if your camera goes into auto, say, all, you know, auto power mode and it shuts off automatically, then it's, it's going to, you know, the connection will, will stop. And that way you're not draining the battery on your phone or your camera more than necessary. But the cool part is it's using Bluetooth and it's using Bluetooth low power, low energy, whatever they call it. So it's actually very minimal battery drain on both your phone and your camera so that they last a lot longer. And in addition, you're getting the benefits of, of the, the, the camera clock to be you know synced. You're getting the benefits of, of the location data and so much. And the beautiful thing on top of that is that you also get the Wi-Fi capability, which is separate, same app, but you can actually control your camera from your phone if you want to. So if you if you really need to, you can do that as well. Now, SnapBridge, the 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 remote photography feature, right now is kind of limited. It doesn't do video, so you can only do stills. And I do not believe you can do things like intervalometer. So I'm gonna reconnect it right now. It's right now it's just uh, connecting to the camera. And like most Wi-Fi based camera connections, it sometimes is a little buggy. The Bluetooth is perfect, but it's sometimes the Wi-Fi part is a little bit buggy and sometimes doesn't want to connect. Uh, I'm going to hit join and see if it works right away. Let's see. And it failed. Okay. So as you can see, 
it's kind of buggy, the, the remote photography. And that is not just Nikon. That is all manufacturers. Sometimes they just don't want to connect. And it could be that the camera went to power save mode. I waited too long. It could be a, a wide range of reasons why it just didn't want to connect. But that's okay, because I can just, you know, make sure my camera's not in power save mode and, you know, just try again. And usually the second time it just works fine. So one of the downsides to the remote photography is that you don't have like intervalometers type features. So I can't just say, you know, photograph for, um, you know, two minute exposures. It's still, you're still limited to what's in the camera. So right now I'm going to go ahead and just show you. I'm going to go to manual exposure and my shutter speed, I'm going to go down to you know, 30 seconds, but that's as, that's as much as I can go. Just like what's in the camera. There's no, there's no bulb mode when you use the, the app. That would be something that SnapBridge could add in the future. It's just software based. They could literally turn your, your phone into an intervalometer, sort of what I use trigger trap for, except I'd be able to do it through Bluetooth without having to be wired up to, to the, to the camera at all, which it means I can have a little bit more um, space to, to go about my things. And SnapBridge also works in the background, so theoretically, they could also make it so that I can start this and then use my phone otherwise if I wanted to. But so yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I'm gonna go back to Aperture Priority. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I love the fact that I can geotag my photos um, from anywhere. So and that is really the most important reason for me, at least, uh, for 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 using SnapBridge is that I can sync my clock, make sure my clock is always 100% accurate, and also sync my location data. And I have it on, I think I have it on medium. Yes, I'll cancel that connection. I have it on medium. Yeah, so loca location ac accuracy, I have it on medium. And it's actually pretty good. Your phone's GPS is great when you're, um, you know, for the most part, there are times when the signal is not so good. So if I find that my camera's not, my phone's not getting a good location. And by the way, you can actually determine this inside of your, uh, inside of your camera. You can actually see uh, the location in your photos. but if you're finding that your 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 phone's not getting location or your camera's not seeing the location, try going to like higher accuracy or something like that. It'll drain your battery a little bit more because it's using the GPS more, but uh, you might have a better chance of getting location when the medium or the low isn't able to actually find it. So that is my tip on using SnapBridge in order to get your photos geotagged on Nikon bodies without any cables or dongles or anything. So. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.